We may have fallen, but we are also, I am sure of it, ready to rise up. We did not do everything that was needed to defeat Donald Trump, but we are ready to rise up from this defeat. We didn't do all that was needed to expose his terribly destructive policy proposals, but we are ready to rise up in defense of our values. We didn't do all that was needed to defend the right to vote in all our states when that right was under attack, but we are ready to rise up to defend our democracy. We didn't do all that was needed to teach our children of the values of equality and justice for all, but we are ready to witness to these cardinal values that our nation claims to be its own. We are ready to rise up because that is what we must do and it is what we have always done as progressives and as unionists. It is time and we are ready and so we shall rise up and reclaim our democracy and our nation from those who would destroy all that makes it good and just and right and hopeful and a place where love and compassion rule and not hate and fear. A Secretary of Education, or at least someone nominated to be Secretary of Education, let's hope that's as far as it goes, who knows nothing about education, certainly not higher education, and rejects the Jeffersonian precept that a democracy demands a public education system to bring forth an enlightened population. A Secretary of Labor who despises labor, the work that we do, and the need for just wages. A Secretary of Energy who, well, he doesn't really know what the department is or does. <laughs> a Secretary of Health and Human Services who opposes science and the right to health care a director of the Environmental Protection Agency who wants to destroy the agency that he would lead. This is a total rejection of the role of government, and thus a rejection of the reality that government is the creation of the people to reflect the highest aspirations of self-rule. It is, sisters and brothers, a rejection of democracy far too many ways, in far too many ways, it is fascism. Further, we see evidence of it in the unfathomable rejection of facts, the rejection of science, the rejection of critical analysis, the rejection of history, the rejection of education as a public good, the rejection of the responsibility we have for each other and for those who come after us. We see it in the rejection of the right to freedom of thought and expression for now, for government employees, who knows how far it will go. We see it in the rejection of freedom of expression for groups engaged in family planning and developing nations doing good work for the health of their people. We see it in the behavior of one whose narcissism is so extreme that any criticism of him is responded to in the most immature and violent fashion. We see it in his appeals to the mob, the rejection of the legitimate institutions of our political system, and the rejection of the legitimate concerns of the majority who voted against him. We see it in his declaration that only he can repair what he calls, in some dystopian imagining, the American carnage. We see it in his scapegoating of Muslims, Mexicans, the press, and any of all of those who accuse him of offenses or seek to hold him to long-established moral and ethical standards. We see it in his elevation of business elites who crave for an authoritarian regime here in our nation that will finally sweep away any and all restrictions on their accumulation of wealth, the protections of workers, the protections of consumers, and the protections of our environment. We are living in very dangerous times, and I, Matt, I must ask you all, is resistance an absolute necessity? Is it? Are we ready to resist? Are we ready to rise up? As we did last week in the hundreds and hundreds across New York, in Washington, D.C., and elsewhere. Are we ready? Excellent. Because there is no doubt. There is no doubt that we need to rise up and stand up and fight. It is a healthy response. But I see his victory in different ways. 
I see it as a clarion call that we must hear and must be summoned by to follow to the battlefield of justice where we will fight for our nation's soul. And in this fight, we need to heed the words of one of the greatest Americans, Frederick Douglass, who said, it is not light that we need, but fire. It is not the gentle shower, but thunder. We need the storm, the whirlwind, the earthquake. At stake is not just our union or public education as it is now, or our individual rights, or our civil rights, or our natural world. No, no, what is at stake is our future. All that we dream of and hope for, a good life and a better future for us and those who walk behind us on the trail we know and love, the trail of compassion, of courage, of wisdom, and justice. To win, and we must win, we have to resist from beginning to end, strategically and consistently. We must, through it all, remember that we are the majority, and we are not a silent majority. We have the power that Trump and his followers only dream of. And we will win, we will win because hope always wins. And what will we win? We will win back not our country, we will win back everyone's country, black, white, red, brown, gay, straight, trans, Christian, Jewish, Muslim. We will all together emerge in a better nation because of this fight and because of this victory. And remember, all our laborers, this is labor's country, and we claim it in the cause of justice. And the good news is, the battle has begun. We did not hesitate, we did not wait. The officers of UUP met right after the election and we began to strategize. The first thing, starting in November, in the first meeting was to discuss what was the first opportunity we could grasp. That first opportunity was the Women's March on Washington. And we were there as partners early on and as marchers the day of as were people in Buffalo, in New York, in Syracuse, in Albany, in Plattsburgh, <laughs> and all over the state. We rose up last yes. week and did we? And we wore a big hat in Hollywood. <laughs> no, it won't go. It doesn't go. The next action we took was a resolution passed by the executive board. Now I realize that sounds pretty, well, it's, you know, it's a resolution, okay, so what? But listen carefully. It was a resolution condemning the explode, explosion of hate language events at numerous colleges in New York. It led to discussions with the leadership of SUNY on how to fight back against this behavior. Those discussions continue, and I'm pleased that SUNY and campus presidents have responded strongly. We, as UUP, will rise up and call out the hate when we see it, anywhere and anytime. Next, the executive board passed a resolution that authorized me to communicate to the leadership of SUNY and the governor our demand that SUNY establish itself as a collection of sanctuary campuses. This has led to many discussions, ongoing discussions, about how we can, in practical ways, help defend our students, DACA students and colleagues, avoid the cruel hand of the government. We, UUP, will rise up and defend our sisters and brothers. We don't care when they got here or how. They are our sisters and brothers. So I say to you, sisters and brothers, rise up today rise up tomorrow, rise up till the end of time in the name of hope, in the name of faith, in the name of justice, in the name of solidarity forever. Thank you very much.